children it is wonderful to be with you again how time flies i'm looking forward to meeting you in person we have a very interesting lesson today it is about saul a staunch jew from tarsus he used to trouble and persecute the christians who believed in jesus Today we will see how Saul is transformed he is converted when he encounters the Lord Jesus on his way to Damascus and how Saul the persecutor becomes Paul the preacher Before we go to the main lesson let us do some horse riding children have you all gone horse riding how many of you have sat on the horse were you afraid or excited to sit on the horse if you want the horse to gallop fast what do you have to do do you have to tell in the horse's ear please don't run fast no what the rider has to do is to pull the reins of the horse if it wants to run fast and if you go horse riding you have to be very careful if you want the horse to run fast you may fall down you need the assistance of a rider uh, or you may injure yourself now i have a small horse here and let me explain to you its parts what is a bridle can you see this pink straps they are straps fitted round the nose band then over its brow and then over its crown of its head and then under its throat and what is a bit bit is a strap which is fitted in the mouth and then it is attached to the reins these are called reins it is a narrow strap which is fitted for the rider to control the horse now the head gear of the horse is the bit which is in the mouth the bridle and it and the reins now let us look at the legs of the horse this is called the hoof and the four legs are called hooves these hooves have shoe casing and they are fitted with a u shaped horse shoe have you seen a horse shoe it is something like this it is a u shaped metal piece which is nailed to the horse hoof and with this shoe casing the horse the u shape is fixed to the hoof and the horse is runs fast and the horse is any uh, can jump high and it shoots up high when it goes fast okay now that you have learned some of the parts of the horse let us play hussy hussy i suppose when you were small you used to play hussy hussy on your father's back or maybe your uncle or brother's back and it was great fun imagine now you are playing hussy hussy while we sing the song hussy hussy don't you stop Hussy, hussy, don't you stop Just let your feet go clickety-clop 
Your tail goes swish and your hooves go hard. Giddy up, we're homeward bound. We ain't in the hustle, we ain't in the bustle. So don't go tearing up the road. We ain't in a hurry, we ain't in a flurry. Cause you've got a heavy, heavy load, so. Hussy, hussy, don't you stop Just let your feet go, click a teeth Your tail goes swish and your hooves go hard Giddy up, we're homeward bound That was fun! Now, imagine you are riding the horse and the words and the actions of the song Hossy Hossy Don't You Stop is on the screen. It will help you to do the actions song. At times when the horse gallops very fast, the front hooves of the horse take a high jump and the rider is automatically thrown off the saddle. Now look at the picture on the screen. This is Saul who is very clever and a devout Jew and is galloping fast on a horse. Where is he going? Has he fallen off? What has happened? In the days of Jesus, the Jews had two names, a Jewish name and a Roman name. Saul was a Jewish leader. Do you remember his name? Saul, it was in connection with Stephen being stoned to death. What did we say about him? Do you recollect the seventh lesson, how Stephen was stoned to death because he preached boldly and fearlessly about Jesus? Well, among the men who stoned Stephen to death, there was a young man named Saul. He had given permission to the Jews to stone Stephen and he stood there watching them do it. He agreed wholeheartedly with the men who had stoned Stephen to death. Stephen, like Jesus, to pray for his persecutors, he said, Lord, do not remember this sin against them. Saul was one of them whom St Stephen prayed for. Saul, Saul was a stone Jew and he knew the Jewish law very well. He began to persecute the early Christians believing that he was rendering service to God. He entered their houses, he dragged the men and women out and put them in prison. Saul was now breathing threats and was full of zeal to destroy every Christian. So he went to the high priest and requested them to give letters, that is permission, to put into prison those Jews who believed in the risen Lord Jesus. He was now on his way to Damascus with those letters, with great enthusiasm to arrest the Jews who believe in risen Lord Jesus. But something great and wonderful happened to him on the road to Damascus. As Saul was galloping fast on a horse and as he was nearing Damascus with his companions were also following him on the horse back 
brilliant light from heaven suddenly flashed down on him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus and you are persecuting me. Get up and go into the city and you will be told what you have to do. The men who were traveling with Saul stood speechless with surprise for they had heard the sound of someone's voice but could see no one. When Saul got up from the ground, he found that he was blind. The light was so bright that he had lost his sight. So he was led by the hand to a friend's house in Damascus. Saul was without sight for three days and he did not eat food nor drink water. He began to pray to God. Now in Damascus, there was a believer named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision and asked him to visit Saul and to say to him that God had chosen him to be an apostle to Gentiles, that Gentiles are non-Jews, and to preach the name of Jesus and even to suffer for the name of Jesus. Then Ananias, with courage, went to meet Saul and placed his hands on him and told him, Brother Saul, the Lord has sent me, Jesus himself, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He sent me so that you might see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Saul was filled with the Holy Spirit and instantly something like fish scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. The Holy Spirit changed Saul completely. He now realized and understood that Jesus was the risen Lord and Savior. So he began to spread the good news about Jesus in Damascus itself. All the people were surprised at this sudden change in Saul. They said, Isn't he the one who in Jerusalem was killing those who worshipped that man Jesus? And didn't he come here for the very purpose of arresting those people and taking them back to the chief priests? A great change had taken place. Saul now began to preach in Damascus itself about Jesus. He preached in synagogues where Jews gathered to pray. He asked the Jews many questions about Jesus and why they did not accept Jesus as the Lord. The Jews got very angry. Saul, who was supposed to arrest the believers, was now preaching them and telling them to believe in Jesus. They went to the governor of Damascus and with his help decided to kill Saul. The guards kept watch day and night at all gates of the city to kill him. Saul came to know about this plot to kill him. He took shelter in one of the houses built in the walls of the city. You can see the picture on the screen. Saul's life was now in danger. So his disciples took him by night and let him down over the wall, lowering him in a basket. You can see this picture too on the screen. Now from Damascus, 
Paul went to Jerusalem and tried to meet the disciples and the apostles. But the disciples and apostles were afraid of Saul. You remember Barnabas? We had learnt about him in lesson 5 of the community of believers. Barnabas took Paul to Peter and John and other disciples and told them that Saul was a different man now. He had a change of heart. Jesus had changed and transformed him. He was a new man. From now on, Saul the persecutor would be called Paul the preacher. Paul is his now Roman name. We have seen now how the Holy Spirit changed Saul of Tarsus completely. A total transformation by God who chose him to preach the good news to the Gentiles. Gentiles are non-Jews. You will learn later how Paul had to travel to Greece, Rome to preach about Jesus that he is the son of God and would have to suffer much as he traveled far and wide to spread the good news. Paul was full of zeal and enthusiasm and preached about Jesus even when he was beaten and put into prison. You can see the map on the screen and how many missionary journeys Paul had. Now we will go to the word of God. Before we read the word of God, children calm yourself down and sit quietly and join your hands. Breathe in deeply and breathe out gently. We will be playing background music and you can gaze at a picture of St. Paul on the screen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Chapter 9 verses 17 to 19 so Ananias went, entered the house where Saul was, and placed his hands on him. Brother Saul, he said, the Lord has sent me, Jesus himself, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He sent me so that you might see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. At once, something like fish scales fell from Saul's eyes and he was able to see again. He stood up and was baptized and after he had eaten, his strength came back. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Children, why did Ananias lay his hands on Saul? He laid his hands on Saul to pray over him, to give back his eyesight and to baptize him with the Holy Spirit. Now children, close your eyes and imagine that you are present about 2000 years ago with Ananias and Saul. Picture in your mind the blind man Saul and Ananias laying his hands on him. 
Now you ask Ananias to lay his hands on you too, so that you too can feel the Holy Spirit coming down and blowing inside of you. Children, speak to the Holy Spirit in you. Do you want the Holy Spirit to make you holy, to make you strong? Would you like to be like Saul, courageous, bold, telling everyone that Jesus is the risen Lord and our Savior. Now make a prayer to the Holy Spirit to help you, to guide you on the right path, to enable you to grow in the light of Jesus, the risen Lord. We will now proclaim that Jesus is the Lord by singing a hymn. Samaria, Galilee, and by the year 40 AD, 
the community of believers enjoyed peace, joy in the risen Lord. For your assignment, imagine that you are Paul riding on a horse and you can do the action song. Horsey, horsey, don't you stop. The actions are put up on the screen. You also have an option. You can send a voice recording of the prayer act of contrition. A short version of this prayer is put up on the screen. If you like a longer version, it is in the perpetual Sakka Navina booklet. We say this prayer when we are sorry for our sins. Next year, you will be receiving your first Holy Communion. And you should know this prayer because when you make your confession, you have to say this prayer. That's all for now. Bye till we meet again.